Hi there, my name is Carrie Williams and I am a teacher in California. Today I'm going to lead you through the first three days of lesson one of the physics unit called P1 from Open Syed. So if you've missed a couple days of this lesson one or even just one day, you can go ahead and access the chapter feature in YouTube to jump ahead or just get the information from the days you missed. But I'm going to begin this video at the start of day one. The resources you're going to need to participate in this lesson will be your science notebook or a paper to write on. And I have a bit.ly link here that has all of the digital resources we will access for all three days. So you can go ahead and click on this bit.ly link and it will open a Google folder of digital resources. Uh, I will also prompt you to open them when we need them, but you might want to just open a tab now and get that open alongside of this video so you can easily access the digital resources. And it's bit.ly, B-I-T dot L-Y forward slash P1 lesson one. All right, go ahead and get that open. we're going to go ahead and begin. At any time in this video, if you need to, go ahead and just hit pause if you need more time. You can also rewind if you need to hear something again. And I will prompt you at a few moments uh, to pause as well, but use those video features to help you keep up with the lesson. All right, let's begin. So did you hear about what happened in Texas? In February of 2021, over 11.8 million Texans lost access to electricity, to heat and light their homes, store their food, and charge their devices. For many people, the power outages lasted for several days. Hundreds of people died as a result. So normally you would turn and talk to somebody in your class about this, but I want you to think about a couple things. Number one, have you heard about this event? This was on the news. You probably, you may have heard about it. You may even know somebody who was impacted and I do want to acknowledge that this story can be upsetting because people did lose their lives as a result of these power outages. Um, and that is not something we're making light of, but we do want to figure out what happened here and um, hopefully, you know, get to the, the root cause of this. So think about for a moment, um, have you heard about this event? Did you hear about it on the news? Do you remember when this happened in February of 2021? It was in the middle of winter. It was February, so winter. Um, yeah, and a lot of people, I know people personally that were affected, and uh, they didn't have a refrigerator, but they certainly were able to refrigerate their things outside on their porch. <laughs> All right. So what happened in Texas, uh, a lot of people have a lot of different opinions. Um, and there are six articles that I have for you to choose from. You're just going to read one of them. And in the classroom, we did a jigsaw with this. So your teacher assigned different groups, the different articles, but you're just going to pick one. And then we're going to go through each of them to kind of figure out what each of these articles um, were saying. So if you want to go ahead and use that bit.ly link again, if you haven't used it already, it's bit.ly forward slash P1 lesson one. Um, and you will see if you click on that, it will bring you to a folder that has uh, several different resources. And you're going to click on this Texas articles folder, and you're just going to pick one of these articles to use. So pick one now and go ahead and read that. And we're going to go back to the slideshow here. And you're going to go ahead and pause for your video as you read the article. So go ahead and open that article, read it, and push pause. Okay, so now that you've done your reading, we're going to go through each of these and kind of summarize what the different articles were saying. And I want you to kind of listen for the main ideas. And also, you can take some notes in your notebook about what these articles were providing information on. So article number one is about February's winter storm in Texas caused more than 111 deaths. So this was written on March 26, 2021, 
And really it talked about the, the massive problem uh, for, with this Texas power grid and that the storm was very cold. It had a lot of ice and snow. Millions lost electricity. Uh, people died without ways because they couldn't heat their homes. They couldn't run medical equipment. Hospitals had a big problem. And it took a long time to get the power back on. So this article is really about the main um, details about what happened. Let's move on to article two. And again, if I'm going too fast, just hit that pause button and take some notes in your notebook. You don't have to write everything down. We're just gonna look for some patterns. All right, article number two. Uh, this talks about people not only in Texas, but also in Mississippi and Louisiana also lost power due to the storm. But most of the people were in Texas that were affected by this power outage. People shared on social media how cold it was inside their homes, posting videos. And people were wondering why this happened. So this is article number two. Article number three, titled Winter Storm Crisis in Texas, was that people were warned of the coming storm and not everyone could leave. So it was on the news that there was a big storm coming, um, but not everyone had the ability to leave. Grocery stores were closed and hotels were not only booked up, but very expensive. And then people were blaming state leaders for the disaster and for not winterizing the equipment that provided this power. Article number four was about windmills and a lot of people blame the windmills for the Texas blackouts. And so some of the windmills did freeze in the icy conditions and they didn't work. They stopped working. This part of the country is, is not used to this type of weather and Texans were urged to use less electricity to help conserve energy um, because of that very high energy demand. And wind farms were hit very hard, and they generate about 23% of the state's electricity. So this article is really about people saying that windmills were the reason that the power went out. Article number five is about wind turbines not deserving all the blame for the Texas blackouts. They also summarize that many people died and they should have ordered uh, evacuations. Some blame the over-reliance on wind power for the state. And some think that they should build more coal and oil power instead of windmills because that would it wouldn't have happened if that were the case. But the state mostly actually relies on natural gas and many say natural gas providers are to blame. So article number six is called I Hate the Dark. Dallas kids have dealt with so much. And so this article talks about schools being shut down due to the storm. And remember, this is just after schools were shut down for the COVID-19 pandemic. So that's why it's titled, they've dealt with a lot already. Um, people suffered with no heat, pipes bursting uh, during these power outages in the storm. This caused anxiety for kids, especially after just dealing with school closures for COVID-19. So that's what this article was about. So I want you to think, and consider, look at the, your notes and think about the summaries that I just went through and consider how did a winter storm in Texas become fatal? How did this winter storm that we've always had winter storms, how did this one become fatal? Also think about what do you think it was like to experience this? Can you imagine being in the middle of this storm? What do you think that was like? And are there any articles that you noticed that kind of contradicted each other? I kind of noticed that, you know, some people were blaming the windmills, some people were blaming the natural gas, some people were blaming the evacuation orders. Um, everyone wants to place blame, but they all kind of placed it in different areas. And then why do you think electricity is described as an essential utility? What are the dangers for a community that loses electricity? Think about it for a moment. How would your life be if you had no power? And especially during a very cold storm. Uh, why is power essential to our lives? I mean, we really can consider that. I mean, we need power for everything, even to uh, charge our devices and heat our homes. So, um, 
thank you for considering those questions. I know it's a little odd because you're not in class. We would share these out um, in a class if we were together. Okay, let's move on. So what I'd like you to do is set up your notebook with a what I noticed and what I wonder T chart in your notebook. And we're gonna look at a map of the power outages. So let me give you a few moments to set up that T chart with the what I noticed and what I wonder. And what we're going to look at is this map of the percentage of customers without power. So if you take a look, you can see that these really dark green squares, and these are, I think they're counties, the different counties of, of um, Texas. So you look at the really dark ones, those are areas or communities that were 100% out of power. So you can see some in the center right there. I think Dallas is one that was uh, affected. You got some over here. And then these white squares, these were not uh, either not affected or if it's a light gray, they were slightly affected. So you can see kind of, um, this was Tuesday at 12, 15 p.m., 4.4 million customers, which is 35% of the population, um, were out of power. So there's actually a handout if you go to the bit.ly link, the P1 lesson one bit.ly link, there is an, uh, this actual resource is in there. It's called the Texas Outages Map. And it shows you a timeline of how the power went out. So I want you to use this handout and I want you to write down what you notice and what you wonder. What questions does this start uh, placing in your head? What are you starting to wonder about? Like, how did this happen? Why is it spreading in this way? So go ahead and make a list of what you observe, what you notice, and what you wonder, and go ahead and push pause while you complete this. Okay, hopefully you got your notice and wonderings all recorded. What I'd like you to do is consider, and obviously your class had more to talk about with one another, but we're going to consider again, why did this happen in some places and not others? Why was it not the same across the state? Why did some 100% lose power? And why did some not lose power or just some, a few people in that area lost power? And also consider, have you yourself ever experienced a blackout? I know I have. What, what, what can you think of what caused that blackout? Do you remember? And what could we do to gather more stories about related phenomena? I'm sure that your families have a lot of stories as well. And there was a home learning assignment that your teacher may have provided for your class. Um, and that was to talk with your family. So if you miss lesson one and you miss this home learning, um, ask your friends or family if they've ever experienced a blackout. And if so, what was it like? What did they think caused the blackout? And then keep track of your interviewee's ideas on a piece of paper in your notebook. And then on your own, how do you think your community gets power? Is it different or the same as Texas? So this was the end of day one where students went home and talked to their families and they um, tried to think of and talk to them about blackouts that had happened. And we're gonna come back to class at the start of day two and share these stories. All right, so in your notebook, if you haven't done this, uh, go ahead and do your home learning tonight or um, as soon as you can. And then day two, we'll start talking about this. Okay, so this is the start to day two. And we're gonna use the same resources that we used in the first session uh, for day one. And that's you'll need a science notebook or a paper to write on and the digital resource folder, which is the P1 lesson one bit.ly link. All right, let's gear up for day two of this lesson one. So if you missed day two and, and you weren't able to share with a group, um, I want you to think right now about the stories you collected from your friends and family. Um, about their experiences. 
And maybe you did some considering of, of how you think your community gets power. How is this different or the same uh, than Texas? So this is kind of where we left off on day one. I want you to think if, if you weren't able to interview anybody, think of a story maybe that you have that you have experienced a blackout and like why it happened. What was it like? So in your class, students would have come back and shared these stories and the teacher would have made a list of what we call related phenomena. So things that are very similar to the situation, but also a little bit different, different parts of the country, maybe a different reason for it happening. But in Texas, the blackouts happened after a severe storm. So if your class made a list of everything their friends and family shared, it's going to be broader than just a cold winter storm. So what other phenomena could possibly cause a blackout? I want you to go ahead and make a list in your notebook um, of some ideas that if you haven't done the home learning and you don't have any, put some ideas down in your notebook about what other ways could a blackout happen? What could be other some other sources of this phenomenon uh, that would cause a blackout? So go ahead and push pause for a moment and write down a few ideas in your notebook if you don't already have some. So when the class shared out um, in another class, we found that um, some people had a blackout because the trees fell and they broke the power lines. So they sliced the power lines. Um, could be a power plant malfunction, like something happened at the power plant. Maybe they had to shut it down for some reason or it broke. Um, construction breaks the underground power line. So maybe they're fixing a pipe or something underground and the power lines were broken. Um, a mylar balloon fried a wire. So I've heard of this before where a mylar balloon goes into like up by the wires and it causes a big explosion and the power goes out in the neighborhood. Um, and then also fires causing blackouts. Here in California, we have fires. And not only um, can a fire take down the power lines, but sometimes we actually turn off the power due to high winds to prevent the fires from happening. Um, so how we they get it gets turned off by the power company. So if you might have some more experiences than this, and you can go ahead and list some of these or other experiences that your friends and family shared or that you experienced in your notebook under related phenomena. Again, if you need more time, just hit the pause button and hit play when you're ready to go. All right, moving on, we are going to create an initial model. So on your own, you're gonna make a model to help show and explain why might some buildings in a community experience a blackout while others don't. So when you're done, you're gonna use your model to answer the questions at the bottom of the handout. And there's actually two questions on the back side or page two. So if you go to the link, the bit.ly link, you will see that the digital resource right here is handout initial models. So you can just draw this on a piece of paper if you want, but here are the questions that will help guide your creation of your initial model. It says make a model to, to help show and explain why some buildings in a community experience a blackout while others do not. Um, okay, so the first prompt says, choose any two buildings in your community that have electricity. They can be close to each other or far apart. Make a model to show what structures transfer energy to those buildings to power them. So you're gonna draw your model right here in the center. And then there's some other questions um, on page two to answer. Question two says, add to your model why one building might get enough energy to power lights and devices while the others do not. So you'll add that to your model and then answer questions three and four. So if you could take some time to please uh, complete this, push pause on the video and draw your initial model, and we will start again in a moment.
Okay, hopefully you've had a chance to draw your initial model. And in the class, we would have done a gallery walk. And so we would have had our initial models laying out and you would have gone around and put a check mark next to the ideas that you have that are similar to somebody else. And then a question mark next to ideas that you put down um, that you're not sure about or something you don't understand. Um, something is different between the model you're looking at and yours. And either you don't understand it you're, or you're just not sure, put a question mark next to those ideas. So because we're not in the classroom and you do not have the ability to do a, a gallery walk, I'm going to show you two different initial models. And I want you to put a check mark if you find something similar and a question mark if you're not sure about something or you have a question about it. So here's the first one. Pretty simple model. It looks like we've got some green wires connecting a power plant to a store and a power plant to a home. Looks like something broke the wire and that's why there's uh, no power to the home, but maybe still power to the store. And then it looks like also maybe the power plant is broken. So I think we kind of talked about those possible reasons. Maybe a tree falls or something and breaks the wire. So again, put a check mark if you have the same things. If you've got wires on yours, put a little check mark. If you've got a home, put a little check mark. Anything for broken wires, put a little check mark. If there's something here that you're not sure about or makes you question on yours, put a question mark. Let's do this again. Here's number two. So here's the next one. Uh, a little bit different buildings, but again, it has power coming from, it looks like a factory of some kind. Uh, it looks like we've got some wire poles. I call them telephone poles, but I guess they're just electrical poles um, with wires going on them. Looks like there's a break in the wire, so it says no power to, it looks like an apartment building or some type of, of uh, office building um, and to a school. So maybe the school still gets the power, but the apartment building does not. Okay, again, put a check mark next to anything that's similar. And a question mark if you're not sure about something. Or if you have something on your model that was not in, in these, then maybe that's something we want to ask questions about if you're not sure. So now it's time to develop an initial consensus model. So after we have compared our initial models and looked for what we agree on and some of our competing ideas, we're going to share out with the class. Um, this would have happened in your classroom and all the ideas would have been put together into a class consensus model. And if we agree on it, we just draw it on the model. And if we are not sure or we have some competing ideas, we're going to put a question mark next to it, kind of like we did how we did when we compared our models. All right. So I want you to think, what would you share if you were in class from your initial model that you think we agree on that should be on our consensus model? What are some things that you saw you had that were similar to the other initial models? I think one thing that I saw in both of the other models and probably you had as well as like a power plant, something where the energy comes from or where it's generated. I think a lot of us had some type of wires. Some of us might have put them above ground. Some might, might have put below ground. So maybe there's a question mark on that. We're not sure about where the wires go, but I think the wires are something we all agree on. I think also we all had buildings. So whether it be a home or, you know, a library or a store or an apartment building, um, we all have different buildings that we drew, but we all had buildings, right? We all had maybe um, like stuff that we find in our neighborhoods. So if I put those all on a consensus model, it would look something like this. So we've got the power plant on there. Now it looks like there's some disagreement about where that power comes from. It could be from coal or wind or a generator. Notice that there's question marks. That means that we have a little bit of disagreement and probably your class did too um, because different power plants have different ways of making energy. Even what, you know, in Texas, they have more than one way. So I'm sure your area has more than one way as well. So we're not sh totally sure about where the power comes from, but we know there's a power plant of some kind. We also know that um, we've got power lines. We're just not sure. Are they above ground or below ground? I think it's different in every neighborhood, probably depending on when the neighborhood was built or 
um, like some of us in high wind areas, they put them underground because it's very dangerous to have them above ground. But so we're not sure where the wires are. There's a question mark, but we all had wires. We all had a way for the power to be transported. Look, some of us probably put like how the wires break. I know on the models I shared with you, it was just like a, an X on the wire, but you may have drawn a tree falling or something like uh, we put on here, but something's breaking the wires. That's going to uh, help, you know, create the, the blackout. And then we have um, the buildings over there. Now notice I've already drawn these yellow dash lines. I've kind of divided this up into subsystems. This overall big system is what we call a power grid. Maybe you've heard of that word before. A power grid is everything. It's the entire system from where power is made to how it's you know going to the homes and the buildings and everything in the community. So we've got a few subsystems in this larger power grid big system. So I want you to think about for a moment what general systems or subsystems can we agree on? What would you name them? If, if What would you call these subsystems that make up that larger power grid system? And I want you to think about if I could add two or three or four sticky notes, what would I add to this model to name these subsystems? What would you call this one on the left? What would you call this one in the middle? What would you call this one on the right? I want you to think about it for a moment. And so often students come up with these ideas. Is it similar to what you were thinking? Like the source is where the power comes from. It gets transported or uh, moved in the middle. And then over on the right, it could be a neighborhood, a community, but we've got all the buildings, right? So where the power goes. All right, so hopefully your ideas were similar to that. Um, and now I want you to think about um, the energy transfer. So we have the components of our model. We've named the system, the power grid system and the subsystems of the grid. I want you to think about energy transfer. Like how is energy being transferred from place to place. What would you think? Put our lens of like energy moving in here as we think about it. So here's some ideas that people had. So maybe the energy transfer, like it starts with the burning of coal or, you know, some, so I put this in blue here. So um, the energy is being created in that power plant and then the energy um, is being sent down the wires, being transferred through the wires. Um, maybe the energy heats up lights. So it's being transferred from electricity in the wires to your lamp, to the light bulb. And there's some heat you can feel on the light bulb. Um, so there's energy transfer happening here. So not only do we have, you know, a large system, the power grid broken up into subsystems, the source, how it's transported in the communities, but it's also energy is being transferred between these places, between these components. And so that was written here in blue. So very likely your class has also created an initial class model that you can um, ask your teacher for um, if you have it, if it's a digital resource or maybe even on the board, but it should look something similar to this with these subsystems um, and, you know, wires and buildings and things like that. So at this point in lesson one, you are going to complete what we call a progress tracker. Now, if this is the first time you've done an open sided unit, this is a very common tool that we use. It's not being used to explain the right answers, but it's a way for us to record our changes in our thinking over the course of a unit. And so um, you should feel comfortable just putting your ideas down in this progress tracker of what you just took away from that portion of the lesson. So you're going to see, again, it's in this bit.ly link. If I go to the digital resources, it's going to be this progress tracker right here. 
If I open this up, you'll see it has three columns. The first column is where you would write a question. The second column is what did you figure out? Um, and then the third one is what, how did we figure this out? So let me go back to this slideshow. And um, you're going to go ahead and take a moment to fill this out, but you're going to need the model to help you because it's hard to do just from your head. So I'm going to put that initial consensus model back up on the screen. And I want you to think about in that left column, what question are we trying to answer here with this model? And in the center, make a record with words and pictures of what systems we agreed on in our initial model and how energy transfers between them. So just really about like the components and the energy transfer. You don't have to like draw all the buildings and things like that, um, but just some big ideas about what we figured out. And then over to the right, uh, what scientific practices did we use to figure this out? What evidence did we get from it? Now we haven't done a whole lot, but how did we kind of get to cr the creation of our consensus model? What did we do to get there? So I'm going to go ahead and show this back to you. You're going to hit pause. As you fill out your progress tracker, you're going to use this initial class consensus model to help you fill it out. So go ahead and push pause now and complete your progress tracker. Okay, hopefully you're done with your progress tracker. And this is actually the end of day two might be a little different in your classroom with the pacing and what you got done with. But normally we call this the end of day two, where we are done with the initial consensus model, the class consensus model, and our progress tracker. Okay, we're now going to start day three. So the resources you'll want for this lesson will be, again, a science notebook and that same folder, although I think we've actually used all the resources by now. Okay, so let's go ahead and move into day three. I want you to think back to Texas. And we're gonna use that initial consensus model and your progress tracker um, to help explain the pattern of, of power outages we noticed in Texas in February of 2021. What additional data or information do you think we would need in order to explain these patterns? Like, what, what would you need to help you explain what happened here? So in your notebook, and I'm going to put this initial class consensus model back up so you have it as a reference, um, go ahead and in your notebook, make a list. And it can just be like ideas of information needed um, or investigation ideas. What do you need to figure out? What additional um, data or information would you need in order to explain these patterns? So go ahead and push pause now if you uh, would like use this initial class consensus model. I'll wait here for a moment and I want you to make a bullet pointed list of what other information would you need? Okay, if you haven't listed anything, go ahead and push pause and list a, a few more ideas. Um, take a moment and, and do that if you haven't written anything down. And I'm going to share with you some ideas that came from another classroom. So some people might want to know about the weather conditions or the diff what types of power sources were used. Was it the wind or the coal or the natural gas? Um, how is power distributed? How much power is used? How many customers per distribution source? So, you know, we saw that map. Is there a different amount of customers um, in each area and how, which power source is with which customers? So we need we need some, some different sets of information to help us figure this out, definitely. Okay. I would now like you to open another page in your, or go to the next place in your notebook. And I would like you to write down a couple questions. Now in your class, your class has probably built a driving question board and you can add these on sticky notes to your driving question board. Just ask your teacher, um, but you will have the questions ready to go if you write them in your notebook right now. So go ahead and just 
title it questions or questions for driving question board. And I want you to take a moment to write down at least one question that you have about the blackouts in Texas or your community or somewhere else. And then also a question about generating electricity in Texas, your community or someone else. So it doesn't have to be about Texas, but something about the blackout and something about generating electricity. So you're going to put two questions in your notebook. I'm going to go ahead and give you a few moments to do this. You can push pause if you want, but I will wait a few moments. Okay, if you're not done with writing your questions, please push pause and finish, and then I will move on. Okay, so here's some questions that other students have asked. And so go ahead and take a look at these questions, read through them and see if maybe you have some of the same questions as these other students. Um, you will see your driving question board in your class and also probably have some of the same questions as other students, but compare your questions for a moment to what was asked here. So one thing I want you to notice, you see any patterns here? You see any questions here about, well, we did ask her questions about like how electricity was generated, also about the blackout, but I'm noticing there's also some questions about like how we can avoid this in the future. I see one right here. Oh, looks like there's a spelling error. Uh, what measures can we take to avoid this in the future? Um, let's see. It's, I saw a couple more that was, oh, how can the chance of this event occurring again be decreased? There was another one I saw. So really I'm looking for, and it seems that people are not only wondering about how power is generated, but they're also wondering about how can we make sure this doesn't happen again? So I'm going to title this driving question board. What, what do you think we could be our title, our big question for this driving question board that's going to really drive our learning through this whole unit? What do you think we're trying to kind of figure out here? I've kind of given you a clue by pointing out those questions. Can you think of it? So you may have come up with something similar to this. Maybe your class's question is a little bit different, but really what we're trying to figure out in this unit is how can we design more reliable systems to meet our community's energy needs? So how can we make sure this doesn't happen again? How can we build a more reliable system? And does it seem like all of these questions here would be answered or we would have to answer all these questions to answer that big unit question? So why did Texas lose power? We're going to have to know that to be able to answer the big question here. Um, why did some areas get power and some areas did not? That We're going to need to know that to be able to design a more reliable system. So this unit question really encompasses all the questions we have. And so this is what is going to drive our learning. All right, let's move forward. Um, and I want you to think about, and you're going to go ahead and go back to your list of investigation ideas or the information, more information that you need that you put in your notebook, um, instead of sharing with the class and your class may have already created a list of investigation ideas, um, but you're going to add to your notebook. So here's a design challenge or a design brainstorm. Um, what are some things you would want to learn about? what happened in Texas to inform and refine a solution for your own community. So if you were gonna build a solution for the area that you live to make sure that the power grid was reliable, what are some things you would need to learn about? Go ahead and add any of those ideas to your 
uh, need more information or investigation ideas list that you have in your notebook? What are some things you'd want to learn about to make sure we were informed to design our own solution? I also want you to think about, are there any investigations we could do um, that we could carry out within our class to further advance our understanding and answer more of our driving question board questions? I th think about like, are there any investigations you can think of that maybe we could test with electricity or power? Can you think of any investigation ideas? If you can, go ahead and add those to your list right now. So hopefully you have some good ideas because the investigations are really going to be, you know, quite fun to figure this out. So um, if you have an investigation list in your class already posted, um, hopefully some of your ideas match what your other students um, are posting to the list. And you can always ask your teacher any questions if maybe you want to add your ideas or if you're not um, sure about an investigation idea. Maybe they'd love to hear your idea. Okay. So um, exploring our infrastructure, here's another home learning opportunity. Not sure if your teacher assigned this, um, but this is something to start thinking about as you go home, like looking around your systems in your house or in your community. Um, I want you to observe the electricity infrastructure that you see at school, at home, on your way home, to and from school. And either take a photo of it or make a sketch. Um, don't touch anything because we are talking about electricity and power. So we don't want you to be putting your fingers in sockets. Not what we're asking for here. Um, but what we're, we're looking for is like, like with that, an electrical socket. An electrical socket definitely connects to the power grid. So that's an example of what we're talking about here. So think about what other structures or other components of our power grid in our communities are making up this electricity infrastructure that we see around us. So take photos, make a sketch, and then it says, send your photos to me, not me. You're gonna send them to your teacher or just ask your teacher, are they collecting photos or sketches and what are we doing with them? So this is a home learning. And then to wrap us up, we are almost done here. I want you to add this to your uh, notebook. Throughout the unit, we're gonna add some terms, some key terms to our notebooks, um, and we're gonna call it a personal glossary. So I would like you to go ahead and title this. I want this on a whole new page, and you're gonna add more terms to this page as we go through the unit. So leave the rest blank to have space for some more terms to add. But in the personal glossary, I want you to add the term infrastructure. Now in class, you probably uh, had a class definition. It might look a little different than this as the class shared ideas about what infrastructure means, but we were just using that term as we were talking about the pictures you're gonna take. So here's the term and the definition that you can write in your notebook. Um, the physical structures that we need for our society to work, such as buildings, roads, and power supplies. So infrastructure is not just about power, Power is a part of our infrastructure, but also our pipes and our plumbing and our sewage and all that, that's infrastructure as well. Our roads, our highways, um, the on-ramps, the off-ramps, that's also infrastructure as well as the buildings. And everything that connects with it is our structures that we need for society to work. All right, push pause if you need to. I'm going to wait a couple minutes for you to write this down, and then we're going to close up.
All right, so we reached the end of lesson one of, of P1, the physics unit one from Open Syed, energy flow from Earth systems. And notice that is our unit driving question. And it's going to be what we try and figure out through the rest of this unit. So thank you for your time and going through this, even when you're absent, making up this time, it's very important to kick off the unit in this way. And I hope you enjoy the rest of the unit. Um, a reminder, please reach out to classmates or your teacher if you have any questions or if you're not sure what to turn in, uh, make sure you go back to class ready to share what you've learned and ask any questions that you may have. All right. I hope you enjoy the rest of the unit. Have a great day. Bye-bye.